feels like. It feels cool, but also a little like, uh, you know? All right, today I'm checking out the National. I'm listening to the song, Don't Swallow the Cat. Let's get into it. so emotional especially with the vocals layered like that like there's some really deep grumbly grim reaper sounding vocals in the back you know what i mean he's singing in front all emotional I'll never be and then the person in the back like oh never be do you hear that do you i'm not focused on the lyrics so much in this song just because i know they're all annotated so i don't have to sit here and rack my brain and try and figure out what the heck he's talking about like, i'm thinking about it lightly and i don't know it seems like some kind of mental turmoil or something i don't know maybe Thoughts of self-deletion? Something like they asked me what I see, except the heaven above me. That sounds like when you're seeing, you know, the bright lights, you go towards the light, you die. It's like something like that, right? But I'm not like, that's not my super focus. It's more of the sound, right? Definitely vibey, emotional, but it's really the, those layered vocals. The layered vocals are really the standout thing here. What does it mean? I don't know. When I check the annotations, then maybe go back and assess that, like, what that means. I don't know, but I know what it feels like. It feels cool, but also a little like... Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's a little bit creepy. It almost sounds like someone's behind him and they have a really deep grumbly voice and they're singing. To me, kind of like the Grim Reaper standing behind him and they're starting to harmonize, like doing a duet with the Grim Reaper or something. And I think about what I want to say to the girls at the door. I need somewhere to be, but I can't get around the river in front of me. Calm down, it's all right. Leave my arms the rest of the night. What do I see? I say a bright white beautiful heaven hanging over me
Okay, now I want to look at the annotations. This cover art's kind of trippy too. Oops, I played it again. The cover art's kind of trippy with this head, and I guess it's a mirror and kind of, you know, it's looking real, real weird. You know what? I'm gonna start this bottom annotation because I was wondering what that was. You know, I mean, play it. Like, these are songs. Maybe I even know these songs. I'm gonna say play, let it be, or never mind. Oh, dang it, I gotta click each one individually. Oh, wait, no, the bottom was completely. Yeah, there we go. We're paragraphed up. As much as Matt expresses himself, genuine sadness is hard to achieve on the spot. Okay, so we're definitely sad or so in mental turmoil. See, I kind of I picked up on that. Yes, you can cry significant things like renowned music, but it is really it is not really honest. On the flip side, genuine emotion comes to him from apathy and the feeling that things are withering around him. Okay. What songs play let it be? In the band's Reddit AMA. Bryce and Matt disagreed about the album to which these lyrics refer. First, Bryce stated that it refers to the Beatles' seminal Let It Be album, but Matt thought of less than an hour later with, no, it's a Matt's reference. The Matt's is nicknamed for the replacements. The lyric reference the album and song titles like Let It Be. Okay, so the Beatles or the replacements, the bandmates don't even agree on what that's about. The famous Nirvana record, a grunge classic, never mind. Oh, okay, okay. The the baby peen cover art record that they got sued over. Now, okay, well, I guess we know what the song is. He's, he's expressing expressing genuine sadness and whatnot and using music to do it and things like that. Which, that, I feel like you could pick up on that without even, you know, really focusing on the lyrics. Now, I wasn't focused on them, but I was reading them. It's really more the sound. But like this part in the verse says, I have only two emotions, careful fear and dead devotion. Oh wait, no, I didn't want to click this. Cause careful fear, okay, that's kind of, you know, we're on the sadder side, but dead devotion? I mean, that's not necessarily sad, right? You can just be like super devoted, but dead devotion. Okay, that's why I'm gonna read it. That's why I'm gonna read it. Holy smokes, I didn't know it's gonna be a whole essay on this line. These two lines along with the following one, I can't get the balance right, are the central thesis of the song. Okay, well, this is a good one to, to read. Echoed later in verse 3 when the narrator is experiencing something of a panic attack. Calm down, it's all right. Those inclined to see the song as explaining the angst of artists can interpret this as a reference to the fear that Matt and the National have about their ability to, to produce music that is both true to their sound but more direct and complex than in previous albums. Okay, I can see that. Careful fear and dead devotion. A broad interpretation would be that these lines are a reference about the narrator's views about way about way he's handled previous relationships whether romantic platonic doesn't matter he follows one of two extremes everything i love is on the table everything i love is out to sea oh being caught in between the extremes makes him feel vulnerable because he doesn't know who he is in these situations see this song was deep this song was deep i'm glad i wasn't up in there trying to figure out what every single line of this song means and whatnot it was too deep there's no way there's no way your first time listening to a band you're going to be able to decipher all this. I mean, even it's first time listening to a song, but let alone first time hearing the band, you're going to know all that. But I'm so glad it's annotated. It's cool to see like a little peek into the you know deeper meaning of a song. I don't know. Tell me, man, what do you know? What do you know? Me and my boys on the road. You the go. She told me, boy, you the go. Like, I don't know. 